from now throughout this week on the show we've been talking about this crazy heat wave and the triple digits it has no um, indication that it's slowing down anytime soon and actually when we talked to our GMET meteorologist Cody Gottschalk earlier this week he said hey um, I don't know what I'm doing my skin is super dry this heat wave is making it even drier I have no idea how to help and I didn't either so I brought in some experts that absolutely know a whole lot more than I do. Please welcome Jennifer Smith. She is a licensed esthetician. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Fantastic. Well, first off, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Of course. Okay, so let's get started. So first and foremost, uh, let's try and answer Cody's question, right? Um, the heat wave definitely can dry out your skin. Do you have some tips and tricks on how to start your day uh, to make sure that you don't go throughout the day with super dry skin? Absolutely. There's um, several things that you can do. There's some things that you can do at home to take care of your skin, as well as some procedures that you can seek out a licensed esthetician for. You um, first and foremost drink plenty of water, stay hydrated, and use your sunscreen every single day. No matter if you're going to be in the sun or not, the sun will come through the windshield, like you will get exposure that you're not aware of. But you can also I'll do something right there real quick. Uh, sorry, first, so you, you mentioned sunscreen and you hit on a really yes. important topic um, that somebody in uh, our newsroom actually wanted to know. So what specific sunscreen? You know, we hear some, some professionals say, uh, you know, SPF 30 is the only one that works uh, at least. Do you do uh, the spray? Do you do moisturizer? What's the best one for our face specifically? Okay, well, SPF 30, provides about a 96.7% UVB coverage. And then you go up to 50 and that goes up to 98%. So it's a small difference, 30. Um, you can go up to 50, but after 50, it's such an incremental change that you're not really getting any further protection for anything higher than SPF 50. Um, and there's no sunscreen that's going to offer 100% of UVB protection. So oh. I would start with 30 and I would do a cream. The The problem with the spray, if you use a spray, is that you don't get an even coverage. And um, so you're not really sure how much you're getting on your skin, which will leave parts of it exposed. That makes sense. All right, so we are continuing through our day. We started with our sunscreen. Um, no matter even if you think you're not going to be out in the sun or not, you're probably going to get some kind of sun exposure, even if, like you said, it's coming from our car to the office. Now, uh, what's the next step? So you should exfoliate. Exfoliating is extremely important because as your dead skin builds up and it's dry, then it's just going to fall back into your pores. It's gonna to continue to layer on top of each other. So you need to find a good, I mean, a good um, exfoliant that you can use every day or, and those, that will have to be a very mild one, or you can find one that you use two to three times a week, but it's very important that you exfoliate. And then when you exfoliate and you get rid of those surface dead skin cells and dry skin, then any products, your moisturizers, your serums are going to do a better job because they're gonna be able to sink it deeper into your skin and do their work. Fantastic tip. Now, um, Jeremy G. Butler, my co-host, had a specific question here because he says, you know, I know, Devin, that you have a, a morning face skincare routine. Can that be applied uh, across the board? And especially for somebody with uh, facial hair, somebody that's rocking the beard, is there something specific that they need to do to start their day to make sure that their skin stays good throughout the day? Well, if you have a beard, then you need to make sure that when you're exfoliating, you really get deep down under that beard and you scrub it. And um, your moisturizer, you need to really massage that in to your beard to get to that skin underneath. And it's also a good idea for men with beards to use a beard brush and it will kind of help to get rid of that dry flaky skin underneath the beard. Fantastic. And so for those of us, um, you know, we've, we've exfoliated, we put on our moisturizer to start the day. Now we did have uh, an additional follow-up question that Cody was able to send me this morning. He said, hey, um, so in my day-to-day um, -day routine, uh, he's here super early in the morning and he has makeup on for the newscast, but then he wants to take off that makeup and immediately go work out. Now he uses an alcohol-based uh, makeup remover. And so he says it kind of burns a little bit. And then when I 
go to work out, I'm just gonna sweat. So do I moisturize in between to kind of balance out taking off my makeup? And am I beating up my skin too much? <laughs> Right, and, and those alcohol-based removers can be harsh on your skin. I would recommend finding a good pre-cleanser that what it does is it draws the impurities and the dirt and the makeup into, it's um, kind of an oil-based pre-cleanser and it will draw that in and you will do that before you ever even wash your skin. So, and it will get rid of um, waterproof makeup. It does a great job of taking that off. And then after you do the pre-cleanse, then you would do a cleanser and always recommend doing a double cleanse. Wash your face twice with the cleanser that you're using um, because the first one's taken off the surface, more surface level dirt. And then the second one is gonna do a deeper clean of your pores. And as far as moisturizing, you should always moisturize after you wash your skin. Even if you're going to work out, it helps to create a barrier between your skin and the outside. Um, pollutants or any of those things, specifically a moisturizer that has SPF in with it also, but going to work out, use a light based one so that it doesn't feel so heavy on your skin while you're sweating and everything, but a last light based moisturizer, absolutely. Fantastic. And so if we, um, you know, if somebody out there is listening to this and they say, hey, uh, I'm going to switch my, my routine, right? I'm going to use a different moisturizer. I'm going to use a, a, a pre-cleanse, different face wash. Uh, should they uh, see, when should they see that difference? How long does it take for your skin to try and um, react differently to a new pre-cleanse or a new face uh, moisturizer, or even a face wash? You shouldn't be able to see, depending on what the issues are that you're addressing, if it's the dry skin, you should be able to see a pretty instantaneous kind of reaction and your skin is gonna feel more hydrated and moisturized. And getting a quality hyaluronic acid serum is gonna do wonders for your skin because hyaluronic acid binds to the water molecules in your skin. And so it can hold up to a thousand times its weight in water, which help, helps your skin stay so much more hydrated. And so the hyaluronic acid serum could be a game changer. Fantastic. We're going to take a couple questions from the live chat here. Renisa K says, what is the best way to counter breakouts from sweat, be it from, you know, walking around outside, even with these triple digit heats uh, without overwashing your face? Right. Well, you're not going to, first of all, I'd like, to make an announcement that don't use makeup wipes. All that really does is smear everything around your face. It's not really getting anything off and it's leaving a lot of stuff behind. You really need to wash your face and be able to rinse the products off to start with a clean base. But um, for sweating, I mean, I would definitely have the, um, just something to absorb the sweat. You don't want to overwash your face, but washing your face after you sweat excessively is better than the fear of overwashing. It's better that you go ahead and wash your face. As long as you're doing all the steps to protect the barrier of your skin and apply the moisturizer and everything afterwards. That's fantastic. Um, going back to the live chat, Lowe says, I've heard natural exfoliation um, is honey and sugar. Is that truly a good way? Is that something you'd recommend? Um, it depends on what kind of sugar it is. What you have to be careful when you're exfoliating your facial skin is different than exfoliating your body. You have to use a much smaller grain because you run the risk of tearing your skin. And it might not be something that you can see with your neck and eye, but you can be causing micro tears in your skin. And so um, natural exfoliant is great. You just have to make sure that you really have it small um, granules of the sugar. And even if you just rub it between your hands really well before you put it on your face to really melt that down. That makes sense. Um, Des Whitman in the live chat, which kind of brings up my my next uh, question, says, how often do you recommend to get a facial? You know, we've covered our uh, daily skincare routines. We've covered how to protect it at home. But what if, you know, there's a lot of people going back to school. They want to treat themselves and get themselves on the right foot for this new school year, even though we are, uh, it feels still like the dog days of summer outside. So what is something if somebody wanted to treat themselves um, that you would recommend for a facial if this um, heat is, is clogging up your pores, it's drying out your skin. Well, you should get a facial ideally every four weeks because our skin cell rejuvenation happens every 28 days. And so 
you want to keep that going. And as we get older, then it kind of slows down, which is as we get older, then we have more dull skin and it's drier. And so when you get regular facials, then it increases that skin cell regeneration to where it keeps our new fresh skin keep going. And so um, I would recommend there's a couple of things you can do. You can go to a licensed esthetician and see derma planning, which um, what they would do is a straight edge blade and they kind of scrape off. It's kind of like shaving off your dead skin cells and your the kind of the peach fuzz on your skin. And um, I do that service and you get so much, you'd be surprised of the dead skin that you get off of someone's face, just the surface dead skin. And again, when you get rid of that um, dead skin, then all of your products are just going to work so much better. Um, but, and that's going to help hydrate your skin, but also the best um, hydrofacial is what's best for your dry skin this time of year. It really um, does a deep cleanse, cleanse out your pores, and it infuses serums customizable to whatever your needs are back into your skin. And you see a difference the minute that we're done. As soon as you walk out of here, your skin is glowing. You can see the lights reflecting off of your skin, and it kind of puts you at better from the beginning because then you're in a place to where you just have to try to maintain that moisture that you're leaving here with. That sounds like the perfect back to school um, yeah. facial. Uh, okay, so before we uh, go, is there anything else that you want to leave the East Texas now viewers here watching? Um, if somebody needed to know something about their skin, do you want to ask your question? Okay, before we do that, uh, Michaela Goose, our East Texas now producer and weekend host, does have a question for you. Give me one second and I'll uh, put her on. It's, it's definitely not summer heat related, but she does says, she says that she needs to know. Okay, um, let's see, right here. All right, Michaela, go for it. Hi there, great talking to you so far today. Um, I really big on my skincare. I have a pretty good routine every night, but one thing I'm incorporating more is vitamin C. And I was wondering, am I able to layer that with retinol because some Parts of the internet say absolutely it's the best thing and other parts say never do that you're burning your skin off um what it depends on what you're wanting to address if if you're wanting to address dark spots on your skin then that is great because it just kind of increases the exfoliation get rid of getting rid of those surface dark spots um but if you're have more sensitive skin then i would definitely do a retinol at and at night and maybe the bottom C in the morning. Okay, Perfect. fantastic. All right, from there, uh, as we started to say, um, if there's anything else before we go that you wanna leave East Texas Now viewers uh, with in regards to just taking care of their skin, what do mm -hmm. you uh, wanna tell them? Never gonna sleep with makeup on. That's a great one, and I know that I am very much guilty of that one. Yeah, that's a great one. So, okay, tell us though, why? What What's the thought process behind that? Well, while you're sleeping and you're laying on your pillow, you're, you're, everything is settling into your pores. And as you lay on the pillow and you're sweating, and so your pores are opening, which is letting everything just set in there and fester. And, um, it's not good for the fine lines, the wrinkles, for the breakouts, it's the blackheads. It's not good for any of that. So I always tell my daughters, do not go to sleep with your makeup on. I've heard that from my own mom. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Jennifer Smith, for joining us here on East Texas Now, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Once again, that was uh, Jennifer Smith, the licensed esthetician there, uh, talking all things skin care in regards to uh, this Texas heat wave and how to take care of your skin in general for back to school. From